For 29 years, the Firestone Tournament of Champions at Riviera Lanes was the most prestigious event in PBA bowling. Fairlawn, Ohio, host of the world's best, and they shine under the bright lights. In 1966, Wayne Zong won the initial Firestone at Riviera Lanes. Then the Tournament of Champions became a place where Hall of Fame careers were forged. Multiple winners included Jim Godman, Dave Davis, the great Earl Anthony, three-time champion Mike Durbin, Marshall Holman, and Mark Williams. Law enforcement officers of Fairlawn, Ohio have asked everybody to depart the premises. Of and who can forget the bomb scare of 91? George Branham's win at the 93 TOC ended the grand history of the Firestone at Riviera. Until today, the PBA is back in Fairlawn, Ohio, and a new yeah. chapter will be written here on ESPN. From AMF Riviera Lanes in Fairlawn, Ohio, near Akron, the SPN of the PBA Tour returned to its famous and historic bowling center, which has hosted some of the sport's most unforgettable moments. Perhaps more to come today. Dave Ryan with Randy Peterson, joined by four finalists who are ready to roll. A PBA Hall of Famer and former Player of the Year who won his 23rd career title in Fountain Valley earlier this season. Good for on the all-time win list from Alpharetta, Georgia. Brian Moss. The thing that drives BB is winning another Player of the Year award. With a win today, he puts himself firmly in the mix. Another PBA Hall of Famer and two-time Player of the Year. He owns 18 career titles, but today look for his first since 1997. From Barquisimeto, Venezuela, Emleto Monacelli. 125 events since his last win, but the confident Venezuelan is ready to taste victory again. From New Albany, Indiana, last season he did a tour trials to earn his ticket to the PBA Tour. A win earlier this season in Medford has already taken care of this entry next year. Mike Wolf. Winning breeds confidence. It took Mike four seasons to get title number one. Six weeks later, he looks for title number two today. He too Back used tour drives to return okay. to the PBA Tour for his 23rd season. His four career titles include the 1994 PBA National Championship from McHenry, Illinois, Dave Traber. Dave Traber knows two things. One, he doesn't want to go back to tour trials. Yeah. And two, yeah. this foil pattern gives him the best chance to win. Yeah! Boot salad, baby! Come on! These are your finalists for the PBA Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Open. Semifinal number one pits two of the PBA's heavyweights. Hall of Famers Brian Voss and Amleto Monicelli have 41 combined titles. Will one of them up the total to 42 today? In semifinal number two, Dave Traber, who led qualifying, looks to win for the first time in six seasons as he takes on Mike Wolf, who steamrolled Robert Smith for zip in the round of eight to make the TV finals. Randy, I'm flanked by two legends. What a dream matchup. A couple of Hall of Famers. Brian Voss, we'll start with you. Randy said it in your intro a moment ago, a chance for a second player of the year award. Fourth show of the year, looking for your second title. How badly do you want player of the year? That's uh, what I'm here for. You know, I, I've worked uh, my, this whole year just to, just to win Player of the Year. This would be a great step uh, towards that effort. Uh, but my buddy, Amleto's right here standing in my way. We've battled many times over the years, and uh, I hope this is a good one. Good luck to you, Brian. Thank you. Amleto, another great battle to come with Brian Voss here. You're in the Hall of Fame. You've won 18 titles. Your career potentially is winding down. You could ride off into the sunset, but still you're motivated to do well. What motivates you today? Well, I made a few changes the last couple of weeks of equipment, and uh, I'm working on my mental game, which is uh, my my good part. And, uh, and I'm just here, you know, enjoying, uh, having a good day, and we're gonna, ha we're definitely gonna have a great match. Good luck to you, Amleto. Amleto's four and one, ready head to head on TV against Brian Voss, including two title matches. Another one today. Big money today. 
almost a quarter of a million dollar total prize fund. 40,000 for the winner, 20,000 the runner up. Remember a win gives you a one year exemption for the 2005-2006 season. Talk about a fabulous first semifinal from Akron, Ohio. Two legends. Only one winner can survive to make the final today. Some late help on number 10 for Amleto, the only international born PBA Hall of Famer. Fellow legend Brian Voss from just outside Atlanta, Georgia. He's won this year on tour already, as we mentioned with him in the interview. Tied with Norm Duke, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Four TV shows, that's a tour best now. And squarely looking player of the year in the eye with a win today. <laughs> Number seven gets some late help leading us to the baby Ruth. Real deal matchup. Yeah, talk about your Hall of Fame matchup. I mean, everything on the board here looks all even. Brian Voss, 46 years of age, and Leno Monticelli, 43. These two guys can still bring it, Dave. Just been fabulous. Tour rank number one in that category, match play. How about that? His words to us last night, the race is on. Race for player of the year. Stats like that, he's going to get there. A different style for Brian Voss. He worked on after not doing well in Atlanta last week, Randy. Well, he went back to Atlanta, practiced for two days, knowing that we were going to be bowling on this pattern, this cheetah pattern, and he practiced throwing it really hard. Perfect so far. We are on the cheetah pattern. It's high scoring. Four straight strikes. Cheetah pattern, Dave. Pretty simple here. The outside part of the lane is dry. This is your friction zone. You can either hook into it or do what Traber and Voss do, and that's pipe it right up the outside part of the lane. 35 feet of oil, our shortest pattern, but our highest scoring pattern. By far, look at the numbers. Shark next highest. Walter Ray Williams Jr. won in Cleveland on this pattern. So did Parker Ball in the third in El Paso. Ten pin, first non strike of the day. And Leto, he inducted. Does he want some tape? PBA Hall of Famer, 97. Nicknamed the Lionhearted because of his courageous battles he has on the lanes as we see his road to the TV show this week. 12 and six match play record against Tony Ress, who made the show last week. Tony threw a 300 game in the opening of that round of eight match. Great finish against Walter Ray Williams Jr. as well in the round of 16. Yeah, he needed a double in the 10th frame of game seven to advance, and he got it. So big story with Brian Voss with a one-pin lead here. Can he become player of the year again? Did it in 88, as he pointed out last night to us. I want to become. First player to have this long stint, 17 years, between player of the year on 88 and 2005. 4-7 up. I missed a pinch slow. You heard him say it, just a pinch slow. When you're playing that far to the right, you're pretty close to that dry part of the lane we showed you in the oil pattern. And he heard him, Brian, say just a pinch slow. When you get soft, it's going to overhook in the back part of the lane. Oh, no. Wow. The 
difference between Brian Voss today and Brian Voss when he won in Orange County is this. Look at how much lower he's holding it here. This is where he's trying to throw the hook ball. And look at this, where he's trying to throw the straight ball. Now holding it higher increases the height of the backswing. Look at how much higher it is here than here. And now watch this. You're trying to throw it faster. You take the knee bend out, more knee bend here for more leverage to hook it. Big difference. And a 10 pin for Voss, who won at Orange County. His 23rd career title. Now alone in eighth place. All time list. Dick Weber, Don Johnson next at 26. Holding the ball higher on the approach. Remember in Atlanta, he got swept by Brian Himmler. And he told us, he says, you know what? I'm going to go home and practice for two days trying to throw it harder because I know I'm going to be bowling on pattern E. He was mortified because he took his sons both out of school that day to make sure Josh and Cameron could watch him in person and didn't bowl well in Atlanta. Swept in four straight, round of 32 by Brian Himmler. And he said it was embarrassed. Didn't feel well because family and friends are there. His boys, their friends. So he's motivated to improve. Wow, another 10 pin for Amleto. Identical ringing 10s back to back, third and fourth frame for Amleto. Now remember the dry boards to the right. Amleto is looking for friction to create change of direction down the lane. That ball looks perfect in the pocket, but the six goes right around the 10. A lot of times when you're leaving 10 pins, Dave, when they're ringing 10s like that, it's one of two things, speed or entry angle into the pocket. Says he's got the competitive flair back. And when you bowl on tour with this kind of incredible grind, 20 weeks, you've got to want it badly. And the tour, of course, leads to the road to the PBA Denny's World Championship. Down the stretch run of our season in Michigan. Right now, Brian Voss, 140,000 plus points on the outside looking in at the top four. The first four, led by Patrick Allen, who has won two titles, will be in the round of Super 16 automatically at the World Championship. Our Denny's event in Michigan. And Brian Voss wants to get there badly. That's good pin action. All 10 down for Amleto, who was named the fourth most famous athlete in Venezuela. Yeah, and you can see why. The guy's 43 years of age, great physical shape. This ball looks like it's headed into the gutter. All of a sudden, just peels off of that and shreds the rack. And he goes, oh, yeah, OK, I leave two back-to-back -back ring and tens, and I carry that slop? What, are you kidding me? Glad we take it. He mentioned his physical prowess, works out every day, runs, lifts weights, into stretching, too. Back to Voss, fifth frame, 10 pin. That was ugly. Brian has been bothered by a pulled left hamstring he suffered in El Paso, Texas, a few weeks back. He says it's been nagging him quite a bit, and that is something that creeps into his head. I'll tell you what else is creeping into his head, Dave, is the back-to-back -back weak tens. Ringing tens is one thing. When you're leaving weak tens, that means your ball's DOA when it's getting to the pocket. And there's pressure on this pattern to score high and do well. You know, on the cheetah pattern, where the numbers can be close to perfect at times. That's something we'll get into with Mike Wolf and Dave Traber, other semifinalists. There's a lot of pressure to bowl well and put up big numbers early in these matches. It's a one game deal for you. One and you're done if you lose. Things are tight. Two pin spread right now. That's high. Four pin. I think Brian Voss is going to make an adjustment when we come back from break. He's going to change lines and probably equipment and start to hook it a little bit more like Amleto. This game plan is not working. Remember, Brian altered his style after the disappointment in Atlanta last week, going right at the pins much harder with higher ball speed. We'll talk about these two great champions when we return to Akron, Ohio. Amleto certainly is focused. Also, the Dexter approach featuring Amleto Monticelli. Two Hall of Famers head to head, only one can win and advance to the final from world famous Riviera Lane. Live coverage of the PBA on ESPN from Akron, Ohio is brought to you by Jackson Hewitt, where you get all the credits and deductions you deserve.
and fast, accurate, electronically filed tax returns. By Dexter, the number one Boeing shoe in the world. What's your size? By Miller High Live, to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the High Live. Try one of Denny's new hearty scrambles, the meat lovers, or the Heartland Scramble, just $4.99. Denny's, we're cooking now. The National Inventors Hall of Fame here in Akron, Ohio. Soon, Garrett Morgan of nearby Cleveland will be inducted for inventing the stoplight. That's right, in downtown Cleveland, a few miles from here. Welcome everyone, world famous Riviera Lanes, Fairlawn, Ohio, near Akron, Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson with our entire crew. The 30th time this famous building has hosted a PBA event. Randy, you know this is pretty much like the Augusta National, the Yankee Stadium, the Lambeau Field of PBA Bowling. What are your special memories? Well, I think the biggest is that, you know, the only people that walked through the front doors were champions. Mm -hmm. And for one week out of the entire season, you really felt like a true professional and you really felt like a big shot. Two champions, two great Hall of Famers, and let them on a Chile, Brian Voss, head-to-head. -head. Each incredible numbers throughout their career, but right now, kind of going in different directions. Well, Amleto's trying to get back on track by switching equipment companies, and he's back on the show this week, but you could see a combined over $4 million in total career earnings, and if you, com if you add their doubles, shows that they've made they've got over 177 tv appearances between the two and let's show you the unique style of amleto monicelli in this week's dexter approach a five-step approach he gets his feet moving really fast that generates ball speed but check this out look at where his hand is it's on the back side of the bowling ball why do you ask it keeps his elbow and hand to the inside creating maximum leverage so he can create all that revolution and power at the bottom of the swing So unique to watch the technique of Amleto Marcelli. Luis Aparicio, Andres Galarraga, Omar Vizquel, ahead of Amleto, most famous Venezuelan-born athletes. Hello! Look the help for the famous Venezuelan whose parents were born in Italy, and they themselves moved to South America. So Amleto spoke, speaks both Italian and Spanish. And right here, he gets a little help from his friends tripping out the 4-9 late for a big time double to take a 13-pin lead. So motivated to get back on track. Feels the competitive <laughs> flow coming again. Yeah. Big shot. Amleto with the turkey. <laughs> 23 pin lead, catching fire. We said to us last night, Randy, I feel like I want to win again, finally, for the first time in so long. And recently, we're talking Alabama, a couple weeks back, just made his ball equipment change at that point. He's saying, if I don't make the exempt tour, I'm not going to go through tour trials. I'm done. I'm going to go back home to Venezuela. Back to Voss. That cross is over. Look out how high yeah, that was. That's a terrible shot. Three minutes. God darn it. That's no good. Three ten. Yeah, I'm really surprised that Brian didn't consider making an adjustment with his line. Doesn't convert. Whiffs on the 10 pin, what could be a devastating Ugh. open for BV, Brian Voss, former player of the year. He has rode to TV, a 12 and two match play record. Tremendous average on the cheetah pattern. The Jason Couch in five. Two wins there decided by six pins or less. Look out. That also not in the pocket. Light this time, two pin up. Should mention Jason Couch had a streak of 30 a straight right strikes here. this week. Incredible. I'm surprised, I know you are, that Brian Boss didn't make the proper adjustments. He's been around so long. Uh, it, you know, his ball reaction wasn't very good based on his carry percentage. And that's usually a telltale sign that, you know, you need to change something. And I'm really surprised that he didn't make a change and move in and try to hook it more. Looks for a four-bagger. 
46 pin lead potential here. You bet. The world's top bowler is hit the lanes next Sunday afternoon. ESPN's coverage of PBA Bowling rolls on. The finals of the 62nd U.S. Open presented by Odor Eaters. Live from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Next Sunday, 12.30 Eastern. Note that start time as we were today. And our next several shows, 12.30 Eastern time, 9.30 on the West Coast. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Second major of the year. Second four. Manny Wiseman won our first in Milwaukee. Big money, big points on the line next week. Is he ever in the groove? It's interesting to watch the ball go so far right and at the very end of the cheetah pattern as he puts away Voss, it jets right into the pocket. Great start, great game for a guy that hasn't been here in a long time. But Amleto shows you why he's a Hall of Famer. Mom said there'd be days like this. <laughs> no big deal. Brian Voss looks at the bright side and has a little fun with it. The last time Amleto, folks, was on TV, June 5th of 99. That was a title match last time, excuse me. Where he lost to Parker Bowen the third. See him hook at that time? Hey, you know what? It's a one game match, it's a sprint, and you, yeah, you've man. got to pick your poison and believe in the adjustments in the line and the ball you're going to use are the right ones. Second semi coming up, Mike Wolf, Dave Traber. Interesting style contrast with them as oh, well. Sure now, Amleto, thanks. Fast track to the end of this one. Sure. As these two legends have really fun. Good luck, man. Thank you. All the way. Bye, bye. Amleto, who came in 39th in the points list. Desperately needing a win to think about exemption for next year. Well, he's earned some more points and he's in great shape. The Miller High Life Skills Challenge is coming up. Should I move my boats here? I'm sorry about this. It's all yours. In our first semifinal, Amleto Monacelli in a battle of Hall of Famers over Brian Voss, 229-191. Second semi to come, Dave Traber against Mike Wolf. Only one slot left in the semifinals of the Miller Highlight PBA Skills Challenge. It'll take some mastery from either Parker Bowman III or Michael Hagen Jr. to make our version of the final three. He hails out of fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Please welcome We're Michael Hauken, Jr. I'm trying to do my best to take him down. A member of our PBA Hall of Fame from Jackson, New Jersey, Parker Bone the third. I'm gonna call my specialty, folks, right out All of the right, gate. Ladies and gentlemen, Parker Bone is going to the specialty shot. And, uh, you know, when I did this before, I did it with three, so I think it's only fair this time we upgrade it and do four. So can we get uh, four chairs out here, please? We don't want anybody to get hurt here. You boys and girls ready? Or should we say gentlemen and ladies? Talk about a challenging shot for Parker Bone the third. A strike through four chairs. Can he do it? One, two, three, four, and yes, perfect. Oh, no. It's all yours. Kirk, just give him the X. <laughs> all right, guys. Here goes nothing. Sorry, Rick. Where are the people in the chairs for Michael Haugen Jr.? Hey, he went through all four anyway. And he did it. Well done by Michael Haugen Jr. Thank you. Yeah, well, the object of this is to uh, pick up your ball and, and throw it right through Rick's legs, down the lane, and knock all 10 pins down. <laughs> now, under the premium shot, that will work. God forbid it doesn't, well, then you just lost a proprietor. <laughs> You'll move when I get up there. <laughs> 
One of our PBA Tour proprietors, Rick Donnelly. Avoids any trouble. And what a shot for Parker Bone the third. Barely clearing his cuff. And the five goes down late. As if the chairs was not enough. All right, man, I'm really sorry about this. Oh! What else you got, Parker? That was awfully close. So we are scoreless. Okay, let's try to see if we can't make the 7-10. Sorry you can't do this in your league. Oh, baby! This is, this is just gonna be a pure potluck. <laughs> I'm just lucky I didn't hurt myself. No, you did not hurt yourself. Matter of fact, you didn't hurt either pin right, either. Parker Bone the third has a 1-0 lead. Let's hope I hit it this time. Oh yeah, dead nuts. There you go. Guy's incredible. Yep, I told you. Well, I usually use two. Might have been better on the other shots, but okay, fortunately for me, it wasn't that. Parker one. Bone the third. Back. Two nothing, Parker Bone. I think we were somewhere right about here, Michael. That looks uh -oh. pretty good. <laughs> With two balls, the big four for Parker Bone the third. Can Hogan match it? Oh, well. Hopefully I'll be able to hang on this and get it down there, but I really doubt it, Parker. <laughs> the answer is no. For some reason, Michael Hogan Jr. likes to go with the left hand on his shots. Parker Bone the third. So Bone wins his way into the semifinals and will take on the ambassador of ambidexterity, Brian Voss, for a spot in the Miller High Life PBA Skills Challenge Final. It was a bold strategy for Michael Haugen Jr. It didn't quite pay off for him there. You see the bracket of the Miller High Life PBA Skills Challenge. Much more coming up. Such great history in this building to talk about. The 1967 Firestone Tournament of Champions held here at Riviera in Fairlawn made history as Jack Bionalillo rolled the first ever televised PBA Perfect Game. Just three years later, a 10-pin was all it stood between Don Johnson and another Perfect Game. Johnson's 299 was enough to secure the win, though. Solid 10, Chris. Unbelievable. And the very last ball. A convincing win for Amleto Monticelli of Venezuela for semifinal. That means he's through to the championship match to take on either Mike Wolf or Dave Traber. They will join now by Randy Peterson. Dave, a first ever TV matchup between tour trial grads. Dave, I'll start with you. You said coming into this week you felt a sense of urgency. Why? Well, I didn't want to go back to the tour trials, and uh, this is one of my favorite patterns, and it's the last time we're bowling on it So for this year, so I needed to attack it for the last time, so I'm glad I'm here and it's gonna help me out in the points a lot. Thanks, Dave, good luck. <laughs> Mike Wolf, how has life changed for you since winning your first tournament earlier in the season in Medford? Well, your season, you can definitely uh, relax a little bit more because uh, the rest of the seasons, don't worry about points anymore, but uh, hasn't changed too much, just gets you hungrier for another title. I think today's the day. Great, Mike, thanks, good luck. Dave? Ready, Mike Wolf doesn't have to worry about points. Named after that gentleman right there, Harry Smith. A PBA Hall of Famer who won 10 titles in his great career. And Harry Smith points title. He is one of the big honors on the PBA Tour each year. And Dave Traber needs to get higher up in the points ranking. Unless he wins, gets the automatic exemption. 132 events and counting. No title for Dave Traber. Trying to change that here today in Akron. Good start, does he ever throw the ball hard? Earning the recent nickname of Pin Crusher. Yeah, Ryan Himmler and the boys gave him that nickname. They said that when Trabes gets it going, he throws louder strikes than anybody in the building next to Eugene McCune. 
fourth career TV appearance for Mike Wolf. Parents Jerry and Susan from New Albany, Indiana, near Louisville, Kentucky are here. That crosses over way high. Yeah, we nice saw effort. that split in the last game. 3-10. And Brian Voss didn't convert. You want to get the ball over to the right side of the three. The ball will deflect into the 10. Tough challenge early. Does convert nicely. Just as Randy drew up. Perfect execution leading us to the Baby Ruth Real Deal matchup. Yeah, big advantage right here in average. 10 pins a game higher for Dave Traber, but check this out. Traber hopes it doesn't come down to a spare contest. Check this out. Is this not the strangest thing you've ever seen? Higher average in losses than wins. Better adjustment on lane 31 for Mike Wolf, who's making his fourth career TV appearance, the second of this season, which matches his total in his career heading into this year. That's not going to win. So he converts the 310 perfectly first frame. So interesting. For the first time, we have two. PBA Tour qualifiers. Oh. Look out. One of them here, Dave Traber finished seventh in June. The top eight made it, led by Mike Edwards. Incredible effort there, and what a split he's got. And Dave's going to be going straighter than just about anybody on the telecast today, and what happens is he gets that ball to the dry part of the lane a little too quick. It overhooks and goes right through the nose, leaving the 410. Tough split conversion. Whiffs on both, trying to kick the four across the deck into number 10. And just an eight pin count there on that frame for Traber. Suddenly he's down by 14 pins. Dave finished one spot ahead of Jim Pratt, who was eighth and last to get in the tour trials last June. How about the pressure he faced? Rolled a 290 game in his final game at trials. Really came down to the final moments. What drama for him? 10 pins, so he knows pressure. Well, it came down to the second to last ball of the last game of a 45 game tournament to try to get your tour card back. And after Dave converts this 10 pin, we're going to show you a video of that. It was a, just a, a tremendous way for Dave Traver to get back out here. Dave it takes 51st last year on tour, two places. Out of an exemption, this is in Maryville, Indiana, not far from Chicago. The tour trials last June talk about incredible pressure, needing the big ball late, and he got it. Yeah, he bowled 290 the last game. Dave has a lot of experience. He's won four titles, has a major, the 94 PBA National Championship. 10 pin for Mike Wolf. Knocked off Walter A. Williams Jr. in the semis in Medford by 50 pins. Then defeated Norm Duke, another legend, by two in the finals. December 12, 2004, a day Mike Wolf will never forget. Won his first ever title. Road here to TV for Mike Wolf. 236.88 average, 12 and 4 match play record. How about Ronnie Horton, a non exempt qualifier? Mike said last night, I just couldn't put this guy away. Yeah, kudos to Ronnie Horton. He had a great week, finished 11th. But yeah, you're right. He said that Ronnie wouldn't go away. Mike averaged 235.75, four-game route of Robert Smith in the round of eight. He was hot. <laughs> Trying to regain some heat here. No. Ten pin. Well, and on the highest scoring pattern on television all year, the guys are struggling to string strikes. Mike Wolf is doesn't appear to be pleased with any shot that he's thrown in the first four frames. He gets a 10 pin, and I'm very surprised, Randy, personally, we're not seeing big numbers. I know different oil patterns, different centers. It all plays out sometimes in a different fashion. El Paso on pattern eight, Parker Bowman, the third one. We flirted with 300, but we haven't been close today. Well, and you know, the only thing I can say is that, you know, throughout the, the entire house, Good shot there by Traver. Throughout the entire house, you know, one part of the house plays better than the other side of the house. The, say the low end's higher scoring, the high end 
not so high scoring, and the TB pair is predetermined. In El Paso, we had a really high scoring TB pair. Here in, in Fairlawn at Riviera, this TB pair hasn't been all that high scoring. In fact, Robert Smith got swept on this very pair by Mike Wolf. Tonight ESPN brings you one last chance to see an NFL game this season. The league's brightest stars take the field for the NFL Pro Bowl from Hawaii. One dozen NFL players will wear microphones for the special telecast. Both sidelines will be covered by Michelle Tafoya and Susie Culver. It's coming up tonight. Tough shot for Trey, where there was a baby crying in the audience. That's why Dave needed a break. Well, this ball here just over jumps again. I think the move for Dave would be just a little bit to the left and increase his speed and just pipe that thing right to the one three pocket. Look out. Oh my goodness, the three stands yep, on a three six fair. ten conversion. An open frame. Expands the lead. 25 pins for Mike Wolf. Doors wide open for Mike Wolf. Wow. Tries to take advantage with another split. Can you believe it? I don't want it, you take it. No, I don't want it, you take it. 4-9. Dave Traver trying to play the lanes like Brian Voss. Mike Wolf playing it similar to Amleto Monicelli. Both guys struggling to throw a double. In fact, neither player has thrown a double. Nine pin stands, right. open frame. Right. Mike Wolf, things quickly changed. Look at the lead now, sinks to 12 pins. It had been 25 just a moment ago, and it looked like he was in the clearly defined driver's seat. So do not go away. This is my final match far from determined. It's on the open. Finally, some good pin action for Mike Wolf from New Albany, Indiana, across the state line from Louisville, Kentucky. Dave Traber from Chicagoland hooked up in a good semi. The PBA on ESPN from Akron, Ohio is brought to you by Odor Ears with unique Zorbatex technology. Destroys foot odor and absorbs sweat on contacts. By GEICO, you too could save 15% or more on car insurance. Call GEICO at 1-800-947-AUTO. And by Uniroyal Tires, the official tire of the PBA Tour. Uniroyal Tires, trusted by American families since 1892. Uh, opening day not too far away. That's Canal Park, home of the Cleveland Indians AA minor league affiliate, the Akron Arrows. Welcome back, everyone, to suburban Akron. Very happy to see Michael Lister, President and CEO of Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, again with us. Jackson Hewitt has been an active sponsor in several of our events in recent years. In California a couple times. It was great to see Michael and his staff. Good matchup here, semifinal. Who will bowl Amleto Monticelli in the final? Six frame, Traver. Throwing it hard, 10 pin. Wow, that was a good pitch too. And he did exactly what I thought he would do. He plays to his strength and he moves in just a pinch and he heaves it. Watch this ball, this one's gonna go down the lane pretty quick. Pin crusher. Pin crusher, Traver. Surprisingly low numbers. Lack of strikes on the Cheetah E pattern which normally yields very big numbers, and that certainly has been the case for bowlers like Dave Traber. In his road to the TV show, a 12-3 match play record. He blitzed Mike Devaney in the round of eight, averaged 251.50 in that match. Wasn't even close. As we just mentioned, that number. That's the ball. They've got him that high average against Mike Devaney, that kind of shot. The average 250, better. it's like throwing a seven-bagger every game. Check this at lane level. Nothing was going to stand in the way of that shot. Perfectly flush in the 1-3 pocket. Seventh frame, Mike Wolf. 
Works on a strike, chance for a 22-pin lead. Max numbers for each. Not as high as we thought. Thought we might have a chance at 300. Oh my Can Lord. you believe it? How high that is through the nose. Wow, four, six, seven. And guess what? This match is going to be all tied up unless Mike Wolf does something brilliant here. Got good pin action across the deck. Can't convert the six, though. Another open frame, and what a frustrating moment for Mike Wolf. Well, he tries to pull a Walter Ray, and guess what, folks? We are all even after seven frames. However, advantage Dave Traver, he's got a strike working. Last week, Walter Ray, first ever. Big four conversion, PBA history on TV. We asked Walter Ray about that. He said, I've done it a few other times off of TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I? Well, I'm nonchalant about it. I think most every professional has made it, but never on television. Oh, my Lord. Can you believe wow. the ball reaction from Mike Wolf? Another split. They're not tighter anymore. Well, we have a term for this. It's called a wet, dry ball reaction, meaning when you get it too far to the right, it overhooks just like this. When you get it in, the ball doesn't want to seem to turn over down the lane. Three, four, six, seven. What does he do here, Randy? He's got to get the ball to the right side of the three pin and slide it over into the four, seven. Oh my goodness, into the gutter. Four up from Mike Wolf, an absolute collapse. Incredible. Well, that's nice. What a turn of events in the last three out of, three out of the last four frames. All on pattern E, cheetah. Yeah, it's. Hear that pin back there? Pin in the back that needs to be cleared out of the gutter before Dave can throw a strike. Your lane comparison, God, uh, just ugly, especially on this pattern. Chance for a 24 pin lead here, partner. Look out. That was yes, high. baby! Wow! wow. Gotta get some breaks. You that is a break. Breaks. Dave, no question about it. And a double gives oh. him a 24 pin lead. Wow! <laughs> this is a huge break. That could have been five. The pin crusher. Wow, could have been a big four. Pin crusher, Randy. Little note to Randy Peterson there. Dave and Randy used to be roommates on the road. Good buddies. Looks for the turkey. Double wood. I can't believe how ugly this pattern's gotten. What's happening? Again, wet dry reaction. The lanes burn up in the front part of the lane that forces the players in just a little bit. And this ball is in, and it never grips down the lane. Well, if he gets a little bit further right, it overhooks and goes high. Something the players have not seen all week. And he needs to throw a hook ball at this spare. Great double wood does cover nicely. In his foundation frame. 22 pin lead now for Dave Traber over Mike Wolf, who has seen things go from a probable victory to a monumental collapse. Back-to-back -back opens, frame seven and eight for Wolf, who has been so solid all week. Lost the ball reaction. And that's Unreal. Where does that come from? He just can't figure it out, Randy. He's puzzled. Yeah, he's puzzled. We're all puzzled. I've just been eliminated from the Tournament of Champions. Dave Traber will go on to face Amleto Monicelli, and one of those two will get back to the TSC. Partner, we're sorry to make that announcement. Yes, it is official now that Dave Traber will advance on, it appears, and either Traber or Monticelli had a chance to knock off Randy, who's squarely on the bubble, his last win. Sorry, pal, there you go. Bye-bye. <laughs> November of 02 in Philly. <laughs> uh, that's sad, isn't it? Hey, but you know what? If somebody was going to knock me out, I would. I mean, I'm really happy to see it going to be either Dave Traber and Leno Monticelli. Both, both of these guys have been friends of mine for a long, long time. And quite frankly, when you when you talk about Amleto Monticelli, who has 18 titles, he deserves to be in the Tournament of Champions. 
He just never found the ball reaction. That was way light off the pocket again. Mike, who after his victory, got going on building a home in New Albany, Indiana. Four bedroom, four and a half baths on a half acre of land. He told us last night he's very excited about. <laughs> he had hoped to take home 40,000 and another tour title. Maybe build a nice deck or a pool in the back of that brand new home that's coming. But Dave Traber has wrapped it up here in the semis. And will take on Monticelli for a title. Okay. Question, right. question right now is what adjustment is Dave Traber going right. to make for the title? Or for the Monticelli. title match, I should say. And if you would have bet me a million dollars that Mike Wolf was going to bowl under 150 today, I'd have lost a lot of money. Wow. That's a low number for Mike Wolf. Just left there guessing by a tough oil pattern breakdown here. Lee Seidel here, our GM of AMF Riviera Lanes. 30th appearance the PBA Tour has made in this most historic bowling center. Longtime host of the Tournament of Champions. And players like Dave Traber call it. Such a treat. Dave's memories, the huge press right. score, as you mentioned, Randy, that followed you. 200 strong. One more game, that's all we need, one more. That's one all more. he needs in this historic right. house. One more game. Semi-final win for Traber. Impressively, he'll take on Emletto for the title. The University of Akron campus is nearby, home of the brand new Edward G. Elias Bowling Center, named after the Akron alum and founder of the PBA Tour. Since, uh, since Eddie created the Professional Bowlers Association and Akron is the birthplace for the PBA, he also was a graduate of the university. We thought this was a perfect memorial for him, naming this facility the Edward G. Elias Bowling Center. And this is great for bowling. It's great for the students because this will create scholarships for them. And I think Eddie would be very happy. Emletta Monticelli and Dave Traber have advanced semifinal wins. Traber over Mike Wolf, 191 to 147. Now they will face each other in the final. Tonight, ESPN brings you one last chance to see an NFL game this season. The league's brightest stars take the field for the NFL Pro Bowl from Honolulu. A dozen NFL players will wear microphones for the special telecast. Both sidelines will be covered by Michelle Tafoya and Susie Culver on the field. The NFL Pro Bowl on ESPN tonight, 7.30 Eastern time. Coverage begins with the NFL Countdown presented by Old Spice, Red Zone at 6 Eastern. What happens when Randy sits down to chat with his old roommate, Dave Traber? Find out in this week's Miller Six Pack. What is your all-time favorite line from a movie? Say hello to my little friend. Nice. You know what movie it is. Scarface. You got it. What's the one thing you like to do to take your mind completely off of bowling? Probably uh, being at home, working outside in my garden and flowers and, and going to stock car races. What's the greatest sports moment you've ever seen? I'd have to say 1998 when Dale Earnhardt won the Daytona 500. Uh, I won my fourth title the day after. What's the best time of day? Probably when I wake up because then I know I'm alive. Good point. What goes through you when people get behind you and start cheering and rooting you on? Uh, it inspires you. It feels good. I think that happened at tour, tour trials. I had a group of people behind me that are friends of mine and came through in the end and that's what it's all about. What is the one weird or exotic animal you would love to have as a pet? I don't know, I think I have one right now. I have my dog Marley, who is a poolie who has dreadlocks, so I think that's uh, good enough for now. On the road, the PBA Tour. Our U.S. Open is coming up. Note the different Pro-Am times, Sunday and Monday. Sunday's going on today, of course, and that's tomorrow, Valentine's Day, at Brunswick Zone Center. Also the Pro-Ams, February 26th, Babylon Lanes, AMF Garden City Bowl as well for the Cambridge Credit Classic. 
Log on to PBA.com for tickets to those Pro-Am events coming up. Big final is on the way from Akron. Looking back at the last Firestone Tournament of Champions held here at Riviera Lanes in Fairlawn. 1993, the history books again open as top qualifier George Brown III matched up with PBA Hall of Famer Parker Bone III. After Brown had posted a solid 227, Bone was unable to strike in the 10th. Thus securing the win for Branham, it became the first and only African-American to win a PBA Tour title. One of these players will win the Jackson Hewitt Tax Service Open from just outside Akron, Ohio. Dave Traver and Little Monticelli are getting set to match up in the final from legendary Riviera Lanes in Akron. Randy, let's check out the Geico Direct Championship recap. Thanks, Dave. Earlier in semifinal number one, it was Amleto Monacelli defeating Brian Voss by the score of 229-191. Monacelli overpowering Voss to get into the final. Then in a battle of attrition, Dave Traver defeated Mike Wolf by the score of 191-147, setting up a great championship match, Dave. Randy, hard to believe between these two great bowlers, 257 combined events without a title. M. Leto, it's been a long time, 97 since your last championship. Does it go through your mind a lot? Yes. <laughs> it's been going through my mind a lot. Uh, I came denied that. But, uh, you know, I don't think I ever bowled him before. And I know uh, both of us won this title. So we want to have a great match. And whoever wins, you know, whoever deserves the most. Good luck to you. Thank you. 132 events day without a victory for you. How much is it weigh on your mind not winning a title in so long? Well, it's been a while. Uh, hopefully, uh, the score will be a little bit higher this game. Uh, sorry, Randy, but uh, you're out of the TSC now, so uh, just like to let you know. So hopefully, it's me. Former roommate wants to make sure he goes out in style here, Dave. Dave Traver. All right, well, the keys are pretty simple for him. Let him a chili. Control his break point, meaning when the ball is going down the lane, control the direction that it's trying to get back to the pocket and keep his speed up so it doesn't come off that spot too hard. For Dave Traber, hey man, figure out how to strike. Keep his emotions in check, man. If he finds a line to the pocket, hold on and just keep heaving it. On lane 31, a split. Left. Boy, the oil is just baffling these bowlers. <laughs> well, he he mishit it at the bottom, which means that he kind of lost it off his hand early, and he got it in. And again, that wet, dry ball reaction. You get it right early, it overhooks, you get it in, it goes too long down the lane. Over nine so far in the splits, trying to kick it to the 10. Cannot. Good try here, trying to get the two to slide over in the 10. And you know, without even watching him let him throw a ball, I, I think that you have to try to hook it more when the lanes get like this. You gotta move in, get softer, and go around it. Difficult start here. Open for Traber. How about M. Leto? Yeah! Get some late help down, goes number 10, and that's better. Well, I said that I think you need to move in and get softer and hook it. It's exactly what Amleto Monicelli did on the right lane to start the championship match. Ninety-first career TV appearance today, second of the season, also in the Japan Cup, where he lost to Tommy Jones in the finals after beating Steve Jarris. That was back in September. Yeah. Wow. Double to start things off for Amleto, leading us to the Baby Ruth real deal matchup ring. Yeah, throw this out here because this, this two pins a game higher average doesn't matter. Keep in mind, Amleto Monicelli is the only player to bowl a 200 game on television today. Unbelievable. That is a shocking stat. Traber finds a range. Right now, this is all advantage Monicelli for the simple fact that he can hook it and then Dave Traber can't. You see, Dave, he's just trying to manipulate it from out there some way, somehow. And 
Leto had mentioned he couldn't remember a matchup head-to-head -head with Dave Traber on TV. There has been one so far. One by Traber. Wow. Click on to PBA.com today. Get your Pete Weber bobblehead doll. Simply click on the, click on the Jackson Hewitt banner on the PBA homepage to get information on how to obtain your limited edition Pete Weber bobblehead and receive a $10 discount on your tax preparation. All that and more at PBA.com. Ten pin. His bid for the turkey. A little disgust in Spanish. I don't care to translate, but uh, this looks pretty good. Six pin wraps right around the ten. Leto using two different balls. The ball on the left lane that he's using is more aggressive than the ball on the right lane. His best ever finish at Riviera Lanes. And the fans would like to see him win his 19th career title, second in the 91 Firestone Tournament of Champions. This great bowling center hosting events like that so many years. That was Bomb Scare Saturday. We were all standing out in the parking lot waiting to get into the building. Light. Now that ball wiggled as it went down the lane. It kind of got to that spot and didn't really check off of it. Comes in light. The good news is he leaves himself a spare you can make. This guy's had a great career. Seventh all time. Earnings list. Chance to go over $2 million in his career with a win today. Nine pin lead through four frames for Amleto Monticelli. Traver's fourth is coming up from Akron. Really big shot coming up for Dave Traver. Looks for the turkey, fourth frame, down nine pins, can take a lead on Amleto Monticelli in our championship match, leading us to the Euro Tire Rock and Roll. Semifinal number two, frame eight, the pin crusher. Check this out. He's going to cave him in and put an end yes, to Wolf's day. Right. Got to get some breaks. Got to get some breaks. That indeed for Dave Trevor was a big break. But working on a couple strikes. Put himself back in the lead. That's left. Oh, golly, them pins. Seven pin. Wow. I don't even know what pin flew up over the seven, but watch this. This is flushed. Oh, my. That was a big hit, too. He's working on a double. I've actually taken a one pin lead there. Look out. Does get the seven as he goes for his first PBA title win since. February 14th of 99. We'll beat Walter A. Williams Jr. Peoria, Illinois, 248-229. This is February 13th. He really likes February. His last TV show was last season in Dallas. Guess what month it was? February. February 22nd of 2004, and we asked him, what, what's the story with the second month of the year? And he said, no idea. Got to keep the streak going. Don't argue with success. Maybe it has something to do with Valentine's Day. Groundhog's Day. Who knows? <laughs> Dave's girlfriend, Barb Grant, watching back home, is going to expect something nice. She's here. <laughs> and that looks good there. Yeah, and he's made a big-time adjustment. This is his first game, semifinal number one. Look how straight he's going. His break point's still about the same, though, out to about the fourth board. This is now. Check this out. This is some 12 to 13 boards left at the arrows. Break point down the lane, the same. A different bowling ball, something will come off that spot a little bit more aggressive. Big adjustments, Amleto, who has seen the 
oil breakdown here. That's flummoxed some of the bowlers here today. Flummoxed. Definitely puzzled them. <laughs> Ten pin on a solid shot. He's letting Dave Traber hang around too. Hasn't missed the pocket. Only one double to show for it through six frames. Last title for Amleto. November 5th of 97 beat Steve Hoskins at the Ebonite Classic. 222, 213. I take that back. He did miss the pocket once he left a two pin. Don't forget the world's top bowlers hit the lanes. Next Sunday afternoon, ESPN's coverage of the PBA Bowling Tour rolls on finals of the 62nd U.S. Open live from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Presented by Odor Eaters on ESPN. Note the start time, 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 on the West Coast. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Second of uh, four majors, $100,000. Big exemption, big points, and a big shot from Traber gets some help. And the four is the only pin that stands. Everybody's making noise today. Just a little bit left, gets a nice break, tripping at nine late. Down by 10 pins is Dave Traber. Does nail number four for his mark. Dave has lost 40 pounds from where he was about a year ago. Low 220s, but he's been low 218 on the Atkins diet. Really says it's helped his game and the way he feels. 10 pin. Well, the players can get to the pocket now, but none of them can strike. Just the most unusual thing I've ever seen on this pattern. Look how good this is, just a big giant ring and 10. Again, remember this guy averaged a seven bagger a game in match play. Obviously the breakdown and ball reaction much different on other lanes in match play from the round of 32 through the round of eight than what we're seeing today here on television. The lights of course can't affect it. The different styles of bowlers we have among the, amongst the four semifinalists to begin. The way it all breaks down, back into the pattern, but we really are surprised. The numbers are so low. Working on a spare, seven frame. <laughs> Big one for Amoletto. Right now, the Venezuelan line is probably getting ready for the eighth frame, Dave Ryan, on the cheetah pattern. Thank I mean, you, che Crocodile. Check out how beautiful this is, watch this. I mean, and this style from Amoletto is just ageless. I remember when he first came out on tour as a 19-year-old kid, a little wild with his delivery. Man, he learned how to bowl. Kept himself in great shape over the years and just looks the same week in and week out. Look at this. Ten, ten, pin, ten pin again. We will not translate. No. Um, I don't even want to respond to that, but hey, have another 10 pin, guys. Does take the 10 out. Our max scores are very close right now. 228 for Amleto, 227 for Traber, an 11 pin difference between the two. Talked about the incredible drought. Very big for Draper. <laughs> Common theme, 10 pins. You know, I don't even know how to respond. Both players have made the adjustments to get their ball to face the pocket. That's half the battle. Once you've done that, can't control pin carry. I mean, you can to a certain extent, but when you can't get it to the pocket, Makes it tough. <laughs> Through eight, the numbers are sinking rapidly in terms of the max scores on your far right there. Come on, this, you gotta get this one. Yes, you do. 
Only seven combined strikes. We thought we'd see big numbers on this pattern. Does not turn out that way. Now it's just a battle. We'll grind it out. Paralyzing five going down late. More like that. Maybe who gets the best breaks will win this match. Yeah, it's got to be the guy who actually carries a 10 pin or maybe goes light and carries a Wally like Dave Traber just did. He says, hey, you know what? I flushed the last three or four in a row. Maybe if I go light, I'll strike. Right now, I'm Leto Monticelli in the driver's seat. Chance here. 22 pin lead, foundation frame for the Venezuelan star. Wow. That is a big shot. Wow. Check this out. You better get it off your hand clean when you're going that way, because if not, it's going to go straight into the, into the gutter. He got that ball off his hand perfectly. It gets to that dry part of the lane, sucks back right to the hole. You saw what he needs for a win. This is an incredible story for Atlanta Monticelli. A few weeks ago, before the ball equipment chain, was considering giving it up and building a bowling center back home in Venezuela. Wow! Yeah! And a big strike there he needed. And now he is on the verge of exemption. Back in the day here at Riviera, I remember Bo Burton saying, trust is a must or your game is a bust. You can't trust it any more than that. Amleto, nine spare, will win his 19th title. Are you kidding me? 7-10, incredible. He can now lose. He can now lose Not this again. tournament. Unbelievable. Pocket 7-10. Let's give him one. He's going to shoot 215. Dave Traber can throw three in the tenth to win by one pin. You need all three. That's what it's about. Only three have made the 7-10 on TV. It didn't happen for Amleto. Norm Duke, Dave Traber, Long Island, a couple years back. What a tournament that was. He needed three. He got them. Went into the roll-off. Won by Norm Duke. He's got to have all three, folks. Here's one. Ten pin. Can't throw it any better than that. Amleto has done it. Hugs all around, in any language. It's been a long, long time, but it's here now. You will not get enough of me. Okay. Okay. This man nearly retired from the PBA Tour if he wasn't going to be exempt, and now he's a winner. Couldn't throw it any better. And on his field shot, leaves another ring in 10. In the legendary house of bowling, Riviera Lanes, Farallon, Ohio, PBA legend, the Hall of Famer, M. Leno Monticelli, victorious again. Awesome. Live coverage of the PBA Tour from Akron, Ohio is brought to you by Miller High Life. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the High Life. By Jackson Hewitt, where you get all the credits and deductions you deserve and fast, accurate, electronically filed tax returns. By Bear, the more you know, the more you trust, Bear. Log on to bowlersparadise.com today and enter to win a free bowling ball. Most historic bowling center in PBA Tour history. One of the game's legends, Amleto Monticelli, a Hall of Famer, wins another tour title. We were mentioning the air, Amleto, a few moments ago that you had told us just a few weeks back, if I don't do well in the next couple weeks here, I'm not going to go through tour trials. I'll go back home and build a bowling center in Venezuela. Now you're exempt. How does that feel? Oh, 
when I when Randy said this morning, I mean, uh, before the match, he says it's 125 times since I won. I said I think it's time to win for me again. <laughs> that was really uh, uh, the key. Uh, I think um, I just want to thank uh, Jackson, you Hewitt for the sponsor of this tournament. I want to thank all these beautiful people, guys. You know, <laughs> it's been a, a long while. I remember with a bump scare in the tournament of champions, uh, I finished second in the tournament. So uh, I knew I needed to win because I know I have a lot of fans here, so I know they're really happy for me too. Uh, this tournament, I want to dedicate this to my son, Amleto. Mm. Eight years old back home, Venezuela. Mm. Watching, we're sure. Does it make it more special to win in this incredible bowling center with so much history? Yes, absolutely. Uh, when I saw Peggy Elias, I was, you know, I got really excited. I went to say hi and talked to her for a little bit. And it's just uh, too many memories. I got a lot of friends here, uh, Bobby Dinkins. And, uh, so, I mean, just, uh, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's just, just too much adrenaline right now. You had some real trouble. Figuring out the oil pattern, we thought we had big numbers. You had that 7-10 at the end. What was going through your mind? What was your strategy? Uh, I just wanted to throw a good shot. You know, and I know if I get to the pocket, I get a chance to strike. When I left the 7-10, at that moment when I knew that he had a chance to strike and beat me, it came through my mind, but in my mind I said, no, I think I won. <laughs> Congratulations, Amla. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the moment. Amla Monticelli is a winner today. The Hall of Famer takes it here at Riviera Lanes in Fairlawn, Ohio. Be sure to join us next week as we have the 62nd U.S. Open on ESPN, our second major. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For the entire crew, my partner, Randy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Akron, Ohio. What a moment for Hall of Famer Amaletto Monticelli.